first ever YouTube video. Before you hear are some samples of fabric I dyed with staghorn sumac leaves and nails. I'm still experimenting with this process, but I'm going to take you along with me today as I try to dye this dress from a bright blue to a slate gray. And I'm not wholly successful in this, but I like how it turned out anyway, and I hope you'll enjoy watching this project unfold. The steps of this process are scouring, which is just thoroughly cleaning the fabric to ensure an even canvas for the dye, the sumac bath in which the tannin compounds from the sumac leaves adhere to the fabric, the iron bath where the tannins in the fabric will react with an iron solution to create the dye color I want, and the bran fixative which stabilizes the dye. I'm also going to add in a mordant, but this is optional. A few days ahead of time I'm going to create my iron acetate solution that I'll use in the iron bath. You could use any scrap steel, but I'm going to use finishing nails labeled as bright. This way I know that they're pure steel rather than stainless or galvanized. I pour in some household vinegar. The reaction that occurs releases a little bit of gas, so I'm covering it with something porous. To test my solution, I painted normal black tea onto a piece of paper. I then painted my iron solution on top of that, and then waited 20 minutes for it to dry and for the reaction to occur. The iron is reacting to the tannins in the tea just like it will react to the tannins in my sumac leaves. If it's turning a dark gray color, that means that I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. To get ready to scour my fabric, first I'm hand washing it. The cotton flannel that I used for this dress used to actually be a bed sheet. I just got it at the thrift store, so it's probably covered in invisible protein stains of other stains. I'm worried about those coming through in the dyeing process. Sometimes dyes adhere more to proteins than the cellulose of the cotton, but that's less of a problem with tannin dyes. However, I'm still going to try really, really hard to make sure the fabric is really clean going in and then stays uh, evenly treated throughout the process. The dress is now rinsing in the sink and I'm going to prepare my scouring bath. I have a pot of water boiling on the stove to which I'll add two scoops of washing soda and a little bit of dish soap. This will foam up, so I'm giving it a stir and letting it settle before I put the dress in. let that simmer for about two hours. I'm using sumac because it's easy to come by where I live, but the basic formula that I'm using is probably as old as people have been making dyes. Any plant-based tannins will react with iron. I harvested a whole bunch in the fall from trees that were just under an overpass, the leaves come off with really. The leaves come off um, a bunch of leaves that are a bunch. It made a lot more sense to just get was get what was around me, and uh, um, I don't know. Here you can see all the gross waxes and oil and dirt and grime that have come out of my cloth after two hours. If it's really dark, then I'd repeat the process again. 
But now I'll just proceed to mordanting. I've dumped the dirty water and rinsed the pot and then filled it up again with boiling water. So I'm putting about two tablespoons of alum into some water and stirring it to dissolve it and then plopping it into my pot. Now ready to put the dress into the mordant bath. Whenever I put a garment into the dye bath or the mordant bath, I saturate it fully with warm water beforehand so that the mordant can penetrate evenly. This doesn't need to sit for as long, but I'm gonna leave it for 40 minutes or so, stirring occasionally. We're finally done with all the prep, and this, as you can tell, isn't really changed too much visibly, but um, the scouring process opened up the fibers and the mordanting, the little things sort of fixed to the fiber and then the tannin fixes to the mordants. Other people say to do the tannins first and then the mordants. Anecdotally, it seems that the mordant first is what gives me the black dye rather than the purple dye and this one I want to go for like a slate gray with blue undertones that is my goal so hopefully that'll happen and look at my cartridge pleats guys not dead yet I'm just gonna let them soak here until the tannin tea is ready So this is the sumac that I'm using. What I'm gonna do, since I don't have a dye pot that'll work for this, since mine leaches iron into the water, I think what I'll do is I'll just make a tea of the sumac and then strain that into another container to get the leaves out and then strain it back into here and then top it all up with boiling water when I'm ready to put the dress in. So I've filled up the bucket about a quarter full with boiling water and now it's just steeping. My tea is just about ready now, so I'm about to strain it and then put the fabric into the water. At this point, it will seem like it's not really changing color at all, but it's really important to agitate it a lot and make sure that you're coating it evenly even though you can't see the dye, because it will show up later. I'm stirring this every five or ten minutes for the first hour, and then I think I'll let it sit for another hour, stirring it maybe every 15 minutes. But this is just very strong, and that's good, because then I'll get to show you the iron transformation today. I tend to get a little bit excited when I'm dyeing, and I am taking the opportunity to dye this beautiful white thrifted restaurant tablecloth. This is 100% cotton and so is the dress. Polyester doesn't dye with natural dyes, and uh, tannin dyes in particular are mostly suited to cellulose fibers. Cotton, rami, hemp, linen, etc. as opposed to protein fibers, which are silk and wool. Whee! This has been in for about an hour now. So this just came out of the tannin bath and I rinsed it out fairly thoroughly. And now we are ready for the iron. We have our iron solution that is a few days older but still very much clear. I'm putting in, not all of it, about half. If we need more, we can put more in later. I 
I wisely started this time lapse at sunset and my dye wasn't quite as strong as I thought, so no shocking transformation here as I'd hoped. Once the fabric in the iron bath has changed color, boil a big scoop of wheat bran for 20 minutes to half an hour until the water is murky. Strain it into a large pot or the sink and top it up with lukewarm water. Move your fabric into this container. I don't know exactly what is happening in this step, but it acts as a fixative and prevents the iron in the fabric from reacting with things in the environment. It's especially important in fabric printing to ensure designs remain crisp. I'm throwing the dress in the washing machine and checking on the status of my tablecloth, which I've left in the sumac tea. Oddly, the, the water has turned this really dark color, which is not normal and probably is the result of iron in the water or maybe something else, maybe some other sort of reaction. So here's the final dress, and I'm quite happy with it actually. It's not as dark as I was hoping, but I think that the general effect is quite nice. It's changed a lot from the original blue that it was to something a lot more toned down and darker. You can see the lining of the dress, which used to be white, didn't get quite this dark. And it still has sort of purpley undertones, but mostly is like this really beautiful gray. Maybe don't look at my um, seam finishes. All the color is very even, which I'm really happy with. It did pill quite a bit, but I went at it with a boar bristle brush, and that sort of cleaned it up a bit, and I think, I think it's passable, I think it's fine. My cartridge pleats have held up okay. I do not know how to iron cartridge pleats. I'm quite happy with this, but the tablecloth, not so much. It just turned this weird, gross, not even taupe color, and I think that probably had something to do with my dye bath being dark green. We're doing it again, but this time I'm going to make sure that no iron at all gets into my tannin dye bath. I'll use snow rather than tap water, and I'll heat it in glass containers in the microwave. <laughs> Is now rather stuck to the stair rail. It's still not that dark and I think that's just because I wimped out on the sumac. It's a lot that you need in order to get a really strong color. I still have a lot of experimenting left to do but I hope that this video was helpful or at least entertaining and if you feel inspired I've linked below to some actual tutorials as well as some primary sources about old-timey dyes. I had a lot of fun making this video, and I have a few more in the works on obscure crafts, medieval sewing projects, and material history in general. Making old-timey stuff is a new passion of mine, so I'll mostly just be stumbling through experiments and learning how to sew and sharing my journey along the way. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon!